We're here at the uh, courthouse because an injunction's been filed, and let's shift this to uh, legal. Peter Gall is uh, with us from the legal team. Peter, can you introduce the team and then take everybody through the process? Please? Sure. Good afternoon. Um, the legal team, myself, my colleague Jeremy Gritton, and Glenn Orris, uh, a very prominent SFU alum and a very prominent Vancouver lawyer. Uh, the process is we filed a claim today in court. And I'll explain the claim in a moment, but I want to emphasize that the claim is a safety valve. We're hoping it doesn't get to the need to, to appear in court for an injunction. We've set aside uh, May 3rd for an interim injunction in this matter, but we hope it doesn't get to that. We hope that now that the university realizes um, the uh, other side, what, what the consequences of its decision, that we'll be able to resolve this so the team can play as planned in the next football season. Now the claim is a breach of contract claim. These players all came to SFU based on promises, commitments from SFU, its athletic department, that they would play football and get a great education. That's why they're here. And now, at, uh, without, with very little notice, and why I want to emphasize that is because there was very little notice, their chances of being able to go elsewhere and play football at the same level and get the same level of education are remote. So with very little notice, the program is now being uh, terminated. We say that's a breach of their contract rights. And as I said, we've applied for an interim injunction. The trial of this matter won't happen for a number of months, but we've applied for an injunction in the meantime to preserve the status quo. We say that the balance of convenience here clearly favors the granting of an injunction. On the one, on the one hand, we have the harm, significant harm to the players, their aspirations to play football, and their academic aspirations. I would like to not only speak for myself, as well as my teammates. Uh, it's, it's devastating, you know, when you're told that you're going to have a season upcoming and uh, it's just canceled on you out of nowhere. It's uh, had quite an effect on my mental health, uh, just with finals and everything this week. But it's been a lot to process, but I think with the amount of support that we've had, uh, it's making it a little bit easier to, to handle. From the alumni standpoint, unfortunately, we didn't have the opportunity to engage with the university prior to this decision being made. We've had some ongoing dialogue as of within the last 36 hours with the university to kind of get at least a sense of whether or not we can engage. Uh, we have had the opportunity to move forward and meet with them next week. Um, obviously, that agenda and dialogue can change from now until then. Um, no other key stakeholders that have been a part of this program were have had the opportunity to speak to anything or essentially be briefed on obviously what's transpired and i think what we are really is optimistic and we want to give this thing a full opportunity to be reinstated but we do believe that through that process we could really see things kind of make a full turn and hopefully come back stronger and more supportive than ever before. Honestly, we had a team meeting called, I think it was April the 4th. So, yeah, so April the 4th, so about a week ago. And April the 3rd, on Twitter, about 10 p.m., I was looking and there were some rumors going around about something something crazy going on. So, don't really think anything of it because it's just Twitter, right? So we hop into our team meeting the next day and a couple of the higher-ups for the athletic department say that they're shutting down the program immediately like effective right now.